patient enters the CT scanner, X-rays fly around like crazy and a slice image of the patient's head appears. But how does it all happen? The secret is a mathematical algorithm called filtered back projection or FBP. In this video I will explain how FBP works using only pictures and animations. This is the third video in my series on the mathematics of X-ray tomography. If you haven't seen the previous ones, maybe it's a good idea to watch them. Uh, I'll put the link here and down in the description of the video. My goal here is to visually explain how the most classical reconstruction method filtered back projection works. My guiding example will be the letters UH, standing for University of Helsinki. This is how tomographic measurement of those letters looks like. In the inverse problem of tomography, we only know the yellow curves. Now let's see how FBP turns those curves into a reconstructed image. The first step in FBP is called back projection. Given a yellow profile function, we send the numbers back to the image domain along the paths of the x-rays that produce the data. Any zero value in the profile is sent into the image as a row of black pixels. A maximal data point means sending white pixels into the image. Numbers in between result in lines of pixels of various shades of grey. We do the same trick for other directions as well, summing the resulting images pixel-wise. Back projection using 12 directions looks already kind of okay. We can clearly make out the shapes of, of U and H, but there are some weird streaks in the image as well. Let's back project all directions rotating smoothly over the X-ray angle. At least we get rid of the streak artifacts. Something is still wrong with this reconstruction though. Namely, the background is not completely black, as in the original target. Rather, there is a glowing blur all over the image. We need a filter for removing that blur. The starting point of filtering is the Fast Fourier Transform, or FFT. Here you see again the back projection image, and this strange picture is the back projection seen in the frequency domain. FFT takes us from the image domain to the frequency domain, and inverse FFT does the opposite. Let me explain how the image content is represented in the frequency domain. I place the back projection image to the bottom and the frequency domain image to the top. Let's divide the frequency content into two parts. The stuff near the edges encodes high frequency information and the middle contains the rest. We can zoom in to see the fine oscillations in the high frequency part. Now let's continue with the further divide. The ring-like frequency band represents a bit larger wave patterns than the high frequency part. Further division reveals coarser oscillations. And finally, the very blurred low-pass image. The filtering is done by modifying the frequency content and then applying the inverse transform. We enhance the high frequencies and dampen the low frequencies in a specific way. The image domain content changes accordingly. Now we can sum the images back together. Lo and behold! we get the original image back. This is the power of filtered back projection. We can summarize the filtering process as a diagram. Here the boosting and dampening in the frequency domain can be described exactly. We multiply the pixel value by the distance of that pixel from the center of the image. The above process was actually published already in 1917 by Johann Radon. For him, the question was purely theoretical. Can we recover a function from the knowledge of its line integrals over all possible lines? Sixty years later, this idea found its way 
to medical imaging. Let's see how FBP works when both the back projection and filter are combined in the same process. This was a visual introduction to tomographic reconstruction using filtered back projection. Later in my video series, I will give a more mathematical explanation of how FBP works. Now it's a good time to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and see you next time.